Hey, just checking in on the, uh, I was thinking about the IR guys. You didn't know anything on Monday, or you, you know, uh, have any, you want to think about them today? Or same, stay, same as it was Monday. Stay. Okay. And uh, Darren Hall, um, you know, with Casey going on, on uh, injury reserve, uh, as a kid that came in, been steady, steady uh, improving and playing for you guys. So, uh, you know, how comfortable, or what I guess comfortable is not a good word, but just could you talk about his progression and his play that he's already put on the field and uh, what you might need for him moving forward? Yeah, um, you know, Darren's a, a guy that's uh, in the second year in our program. We've got a lot of confidence in, in Darren. I, you know, I think he's had a pretty good season up to this point. He had a really good camp. So, um, like all our guys, uh, you know, there's high expectations and, and we're very pleased with Darren's progress. Well, you were at certain points, kind of like what you guys did with Jalen last year, it seemed like you were working Darren in here and there. I think for Casey, it was maybe a possession here, a possession there. Was that was a game plan? It was, but it was part of that too, similar to what you guys were trying to do last year to get experience in case something like this happened. Well, a lot of times when guys play Mike, there's a lot of different reasons. One, yeah, you only got 48 guys dressed. And if we give somebody a helmet, um, we expect them to contribute. How much depends on the plan, how flow of the game. Um, everybody's on a different – those are different plans. So it's not just apples to apples. Uh, like I said, I'm very pleased with Darren. We got a lot of confidence in Darren. What is it that you feel like he brings to the table as a guy who hasn't seen a lot of – Yeah, you're looking at it all wrong. Okay. I mean, I, mean, I, know, I know everybody's used to, like, just a depth chart and those are the guys and write it in stone and may post-draft and, you know, they just sit there and 11 guys just sit there with their helmets. Everybody's going to play and we got different roles and it depends on the plan. And so, uh, seen a lot of progress in Darren. Very pleased with him. Uh, glad he's on our team. When you talk about the defensive backs, I don't know if you cognizantly realize this or not, but you say a lot for the defensive backs when you're talking about them that you can feel them. Um, what does that mean for you even, like maybe not statistically, but when you're looking at how do you feel this defensive back group? It depends on the coverage. Um, guys, I mean, hasn't been perfect. I think they tackle relatively well as a group. Uh, it's, it's a physical group all the way around. Uh, and I think AJ is one of the more physical corners and run support. Um, I think you get guys, again, depending on the coverage or the call, uh, more times than not, they've been in the right spots. I think, you know, there's progress being made every week. And those guys enjoy it. And we uh, playing out there with each other. And so, like I said, we had a lot of guys. I mean, the guys we finished the game with, we had a lot of confidence. I mean, uh, you know, D was working through something and he was able to finish the game. Uh, Mike Ford goes out there. Isaiah, you know, those are, so that's why we train the way we do, and that's why we believe in our team. And so, uh, and we'll see what it looks like this week with, with some of the other guys that are nicked up. Speaking of one of those guys, do you expect AJ to be out there today, and how's he feeling? Um, he'll be out there today. We'll see how the week goes, though. What about Isaiah? Uh, yeah, Isaiah finished the game, right? He's out. Yeah, finished the game. Okay. He'll be out there. Coach, what are some of the challenges you see offensively and defensively from Cincinnati as you prepare for them? Yeah, so obviously Cincinnati uh, had a lot of success last year. Uh, went on a good run, obviously all the way down to the last possession of the Super Bowl. Uh, you know, they're 3-3 three and three like we are. Been a lot of close games. Uh, they got a really good uh, staff and, and personnel. A uh, little contrast in styles compared to, you know, that's why every week's a different challenge. A lot of 11 personnel. Really good, really good receivers. Uh, they, you know, obviously Burrow, you know, been playing pretty well for them. Made a lot of big plays. Chase, Higgins, Boyd. Uh, you know, you get production out of the, of the backfield too with Mixon in the passing game. So, it's a different challenge. A lot of eleven personnel, and they're and they're pretty damn good at it. Uh, defensively, they give you a lot of looks, multiple looks, uh, multiple fronts. Really good secondary, uh, solid edge setters. So. It'll be a good challenge and, and going up on the road against a good football team. Hang with me for this for a second. Um, <laughs> after after the game on Sunday, obviously it looks like you're having a lot of fun. Everybody saw the, the post-game beer celebration. How would you describe the culture around here right now? I mean, uh, all of y'all are around us uh, quite a bit that cover cover us and, you know, it's it's 
we got a lot of uh, guys that put in the work. They enjoy being around each other. Um, but it's something you got to work on every day uh, just because you won a game on Sunday. And, yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to win, and but you got to turn the page just like when you lose. So I think you'll find out more kind of how we respond this week, uh, how you handle success just as much as as important as you handle any kind of failure too. So it's a big week for us. Uh, we got a huge, huge challenge. So it's something we work on every day. But uh, and like I said a lot of times, I enjoy coming to work every day. Do you feel it actively changing around here? Again, it's something you got to work on every day. I, I don't doesn't mean that we think we're any better than anybody else. It's just it's what we do here and what we believe in. There's a lot of ways to win. There's a lot of everybody's got different philosophies, and you got to make it your own. Uh, we're not trying to copy anybody. We're again, we're trying to build this thing the way we we believe in. Doesn't again there, that arrogance of thinking that hey, just because we've got it and we've had some success recently, that you're doing any better than somebody else. It's just our own, and I enjoy it, but it's something we, we value and we work on every day. You talk about taking objective looks and how to handle success and failure and all that. For this team right now where you are, what do you still want to see this team improve on and take a step in, particularly Everything. offensively? Everything. That's the name of the game. So you're not going to be the team you were in week one and week six, and uh, it's a challenge every week. So we can improve everywhere. Hey, Coach, what, um, uh, you know, is your all philosophy on coaching turnovers and, and making them happen with uh, plus two now, y'all are seventh in the league? So you rephrase that again, I'm sorry. Um, what's your um, – You said coaching you, you turnovers. Coach turn, you know, how, do you just get them, you coach them, or, you know – Yeah, you work happen, everything, fundamentals. Ball. Yeah, there's a lot of things that, you know, the ball does have a tendency to bounce a funny way sometimes, but there's certain things that you work on as part of fundamentals, how you tackle – how you try to go about ripping the ball out, uh, you know, what Rashawn did when the guy, yeah, the guy wrapped up and the ball came out and it took the right bounce twice for us. Um, no different than ball disruption while you're attacking the football, trying to play through the pocket, or ball disruption, you get a chance to tip the ball up. Those are all things you work on and, uh, you know, sometimes, again, the play takes them that way. A quarterback, you move them off the spot, changes his arm angle, you're able to get a tip and the ball's picked. So, yeah, it's something we – certainly actively work on. Uh, same thing on the other side, going through traffic, uh, securing the ball, uh, quarterback in the pocket, all that stuff. I know we've talked about it a few times already, but Marcus's comfort level with the offense. When you went back and watched last week, is, are there things you've seen that you're like, wow, I don't know if I would have necessarily seen that in week one or two because he understands this better now or understands this Well, better. I mean, we, again, it's, it's, a, it's like a living, breathing, uh, document you know so I know everybody like if you printed out most teams playbooks and they went online it wouldn't matter it's a lot of it's the detail um, I know it looks somebody could sound smart if they use some of our terms and what you call 12 to 14 our basic routes some people might call it dig some people call it an in it doesn't matter a lot of it's the, the teaching that goes on behind the scenes and the details of it um, and there's an evolution that happens during the season guys as they improve or you know you may have injuries certain where in certain places and you adapt and so long story short uh, we just want to see improvement every week um, you know everything we're asking them you know it, won't, it doesn't look the same and it's not the same as the stuff we talked about in the meeting room uh, late September of 2019 when he and I were together so that's what I appreciate about Marcus and really the whole group and the coaching staff and we're just looking to get better Mike and uh, that's the end of the game and if, if we don't You'll get exposed in a hurry in this league. Is the beers celebration, is that a standing thing now? If y'all win and they get 100 yards rushing? No. Okay. We'll, see. we'll see what happens. You mentioned earlier, um, you know, focus about uh, the team handling success. I know you praise the players a lot for just the way they work day in, day out. Is that something that you have to em emphasize in a week like this when you know, Marcus wins NFC Offense Player of the Week and yeah. you're getting a lot of praise in the media, or is that something yeah, that these guys already have? Yeah, it's the same thing. It's I don't believe it, and it's just it's like the Iker syndrome, right? You don't want to be too high, don't want to fly too low. Again, when you're you know the worst in the league or you're the best, and neither one's true. So that's kind of my approach, and I think that perspective matters, and when that's what I love about this this game and uh, certainly the NFL. Uh, 
how competitive it is. And if you don't have that perspective, like I've said, you'll be humble quick. And so that's our charge every week. We know the, the challenge this week with a really good Cincinnati team. It's really talented. They've had a lot of recent success. Uh, all their losses have been one possession. Uh, we're going on the road, a team that we're not that familiar with. They're in uh, AFC and they're playing AFC North. I uh, got a little familiar, familiarity with them. Uh, played them in 2020. Uh, there's always connections, whether players or coaches. So we know it's a unique challenge, and that's what you, we want to see how we respond this week. And can we make the corrections? Can we un execute a plan and, uh, and improve to go beat a really tough team on the road? Dean was talking um, last week about Troy Anderson. He made the comment, he was like, you know, he's young and he's, he's going to make mistakes, but he's going to do so being aggressive. How do you see that mindset, not just with Troy Anderson, but maybe with a lot of these young players that are in their first and second year in the league on this team? Yeah, I mean, that's – I think the way some of these guys play, I mean, it can make up for a lot of small mistakes. You're obviously, you're coaching everything as you're – there's a lot of stuff happening pre-snap, post-snap, the way the games are playing with the assignments and some of the things we ask them to do. Um, and you're coaching to, you know, improve and and, and uh, not have any kind of mental errors. But there's a lot of things that where guys can get hesitant. And if you see that, then they, they got no chance to play, especially as a young player. So at least if you're going to be wrong, go, go a thousand miles an hour and try to, you know, break through something. And uh, I think he's done that at times. Um, See if you know there was a screen late in the game where he was able to. They called him pressure. It was a good look by San Fran. Good call against pressure, and Troy made it right. Just got underneath the blocks. There was three guys out in front. Slipped underneath, and then the Calvary came up behind him. And uh, it was a good play by Troy. wasn't perfect technique, but that's what you're looking for right now. Same thing with with AK. You're seeing at times, and then even D'Angelo. So that's what you want to see. Do you anticipate Mike Mike Walker being back? He'll be out there today. He'll be. So. He's able to go Sunday all of a sudden. That gives you maybe a, a good problem to have with, with the yeah, way great Troy's problem. playing. Great problem. But again, I know um, everybody gets all excited and, and giddy inside because of they haven't seen enough of a new young player and they go warm and fuzzy about a draft pick and what they could potentially be and we're having Troy's progress. But I'm very, very pleased with Michael Walker. So we'll find ways to get good football players out there that are going to help us. And how that'll look this week may be different than what we've shown in the past. And uh, We'll find a way. But Coach, just one thing on the Bengals. Um, what do their safe safeties provide for them? Back yeah, there? Jesse Bell Bates. And Bates. And, yeah, yeah, Bates and, and Bell. Uh, like I said, the secondary, Luzi, Apple, Mike Hilton, I think is one of the best inside corners in the league. Tougher than hell. Yeah, I, I, hell. Uh, watching him play in Pittsburgh a couple of years ago, watching him last year. Um, guy's a damn good football player. And I got a lot of respect the, the way he plays at his size. Uh, I don't think Mike Hilton gets enough credit either. But Bates and, and Bell, those guys are very confident. They've been together. Uh, and they, they're smart. They know they, you're not going to trick them. And it helps when you have that veteran secondary out there. And they've been in big games. So we got a challenge this week, and we, we better be on point.